we started with some overview and then we, we got deeper into different aspects and then we see some demos. So the most high level overview of the project of, of Wideland, at least the way we see it, is we can decompose it into, into three, three planes, so three aspects. One aspect, which is represented by this, this, this forest, is the information management or knowledge management aspect. We see Wildland as an as a information or knowledge management tool. So those, those trees here represent data containers that we discuss later. And then there is another plane, which is the infrastructure plane. And this represents the aspect which is about where all this information, where all this knowledge, knowledge from my forest, where is it really stored? Or where is the compute service run for those data containers? So in some way, you can look at Wyland as a translation layer between the information uh, domain to the infrastructure domain. But to make this process, to make this um, detachment of the information domain from infrastructure domain, because of course, we see infrastructure as a, as a necessary evil. Like in an ideal platonic world, we would only have information, we would only have ideas. But in, in the real world, we need the information to be stored somewhere, so we have this, this infrastructure that we, you know, we are all developers, DevOps, we need to think like, where should I put my whatever backups, my, my uh, dockers? And we have those cloud services or other kind of technologies. So, so Wyland tries to hide it, hide it or make it seamless for the user. But, but to really make it seamless, we have this, this third plane, which is the economics or tokenomics, as we say, or marketplace plane, which is a helpful layer for the infrastructure or for Wildland, so, so that Wildland software can automatically find infrastructure for data containers. So ideally, the user is only concerned with how information is organized in the user's forest. And then Wyland takes care about everything else. I have my photos. My photos take, I don't know, one terabyte. And Wyland knows that my photos should be stored on some reliable storage. Uh, in some data center or maybe also on my NAS, and it constantly makes sure that the, all the containers with my photos are assigned to, to this kind of storage. And the marketplace layer helps uh, to find the infrastructure, select the best cloud provider or, or other kinds of providers. What is important here is um, you see those two robots here that, that work on behalf of, of the user. One robot is, is the client, which is responsible for talking to, to infrastructure, and the other is agent. We will be showing you demos of both of those uh, software components, which, is, which, is, which goes to the marketplace and automatically obtains uh, storage. You also see that this, this forest, the forest that we, we, we have this, this term forest that, that roughly corresponds to, to something which we could call a namespace, uh, where all this information lives. And you see that it, it wraps around and that the marketplace with, with offers for, for various backends is really kept on Wyland forest. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same forest as this user's forest, it could be other forest, but it really doesn't matter because we have, we have inter-forest um, jumping mechanism or addressing mechanism that, that connects different forests that we'll show you later. Let me stress that, that from the technical point of view, the, the fundamental concept in, in Wildland is is the notion of a data container. A data container is kind of like a Docker container, except that a Docker is for, for code, but a Wyland container is for data. 
So Docker runs on a service provider, somewhere in a data center, but uh, Wyland container is something that, for example, groups user photos from, from last holidays, or maybe it groups all the files from project Wyland, or maybe it groups all my uh, emails, or maybe my notes. You, you get the idea. And something that is very different in Wildland versus other approaches to, to data management or information management is that each container has a, has, a, has a manifest which has the address of the container written on it, or more precisely, addresses of the container. This means that every container can define by itself what is its address. For example, my container can say, my address is um, places Europe, Poland, Warsaw, um, Koszyki. And then it could say, my address is also events, Wildland, uh, Wildcon 1, and topics, uh, projects, Wildland. It will define three different addresses or names for itself. And this container will be, or, or Wildland client will make this container available in all those different paths to, to the user. And we will be demonstrating, demonstrating this later. So the, the, the important aspect here is that containers are self-contained and they have addresses that are self-defined. And of course we do it this way because we want the containers to be movable between different infrastructure. Maybe this month, this container will be kept on S3, on AWS S3. Maybe next month, it will be kept on uh, uh, Google Cloud Platform storage. And even next month, on somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we don't want the user to see that the container addresses need to be updated when the user moves, when, when, when the logic underneath moves the data on different, to different providers. Because really, to have this whole marketplace smoothly operating uh, and always selecting the most optimal uh, backend, we really need to make it seamless for the user where um, the process of accessing the container. So, so you see that the container gives you, on, on the one hand, from those labels, uh, the forest is created. So the information aspect, and then the containers are, are kept on different, on different storage buckets. Uh, I'll ask uh, Julian to, to talk more about uh, this, this last plane, this marketplace uh, plane. So, so basically, like when we, when we meet on a, on, a, on a, like a conference seminar like this, like and when we talk about technology, we often like, do not ask the question like why we need to create that technology. Um, in the first place. And, and I believe that the reasons that, that we are discussing those problems right now, like which basically is that we are not able to interact with our information, with our data, which is information, as, as we would like to interact is, is because technology, like in, I mean, like a consumer IT technology took, um, a little, a little bit wrong path over the, the last uh, two decades. So, so, so like, of course, like most of you are developers. So maybe this is something you, you, you understand much better than, than other, than the rest of the population. But, but, but most of the people like do not interact with, with, with files anymore. Do not interact with the like a raw information anymore and do not manage their information on their own. They, 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 they interact with the uh, information given to them through different kind of services, uh, like applications that serve the, this information as services. And, and that happens not because the, the correct technology for, for, to enable us to, to interact with the information uh, is not there. Like, it, it could be there. Like, this is, this is, this is possible to, to, to use uh, 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 something better than, than um, 
services by the, the giant firms to, to, to interact with your photos, with your calendar, with, with that, whatever. This is, this is because like how, um, how the market is, is organized. So, so that the people are uh, basically uh, monetized with the data to use that uh, services for free. And, and our belief is that we, we can work on the technology to, 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 to empower people to, to use that information better, to, to get free from that. But if this is uh, created without some economic layer to, to, to help in the adoption and help in the mainstreaming that technology, it will remain like a very, very niche thing. Like, of course, there is nothing wrong with the niche things, but it will remain such a niche that it will be irrelevant in, 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 in fact. And so, so, so probably like there are, there are several problems to be, to be solved on, on that level. Like the, the most obvious one is that if you have information and you want that information to leave somewhere else, then on your machine, on your device, you, you need the storage somewhere. And of course, this is like a economic relation. You need to, to get that storage from somewhere for something. So, so there is like a natural marketplace for that. But the more important problem and, uh, and the critical problem, in, in, in my opinion, for for uh, for uh, um, uh, for, in, in from, for, for for that part of our life today, is that the services we use, the the infrastructure we use, is in fact like a public infrastructure. So so this is like a vital to uh, to our lives, to to our quality of life as as, as, a, as a first class citizen. And on the other hand, although it has like all the properties of the public infrastructure in, in, in economic terms, uh, it is in fact private infrastructure, and, and it, it is privatized, privatized, and it is, and it is not developed uh, in our best interest in mind, but it is developed in the in the, uh, in the interest of the of the owners in the, in, of the infrastructure, and of course th those two do, do not align like the. So, so how we, we, we could solve that problem? I, I will start with the, with the more general um, diagram that you could see in the, in the paper, uh, which, which presents something that we call um, the combination of um, uh, payment system and, and, and uh, UDO, user-defined organization. So, so basically, the idea here is that we create a kind of decentralized organization with its own finances and with its own money streams with the as possible simplification, uh, with as simple governance as, as possible. I, I'm not going into details right now of the, like, what are the problems with decentralized organizations so far. Uh, this is like a work in progress, I think, for the, for the whole decentralized space. Uh, but the, I think, two most important problems that needs to be named is that um, that people are usually not really engaging, even if it is not in their best interest. So this is like not going to the elections in the in the democracy, and people have some kind of voting rights in the decentralized organization, but they remain passive most of the times. And in a way, like this is. Uh, uh, because that takes time and people just do not want to, to get involved. So, so this is the first problem. And the second problem, of course, is how we determine like, who is able to, to decide in, a, in, a, in an, any kind of decentralized organization. And, um, and how we solve that? So first, we, we of course need the market. So, so we need to, people to, to buy something, to have any, any kind of, of a financial flow between the parties. And that is, of course, uh, the market. In our case, in the, at least at the beginning, this will be market for the infrastructure. So, so basically, for paying for the for storing things somewhere, uh, somewhere on the on the internet, somewhere in the, in the cloud storage. So we have uh, users who want that storage. We have some kind of like 
yeah, they, they are named here service providers that should be infrastructure providers, in fact. Uh, we have like a move forward with our, with our naming of things since that, that diagram was, uh, was produced. And there is like a flow of payment between users and, 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 the, and the providers of the infrastructure for the infrastructure. And what we do is that although like the most of the mm, payment goes to the, to the providers, we split that into like a two fees. And the, and the one fee is used to generate something we call proof of usage. And this proof of usage is like a voting right in the, in the organization. So, so in fact, like this is, I think, pretty nice workaround of the problem, like who, has, who is entitled to decide. So, so the more you use an organization, the services of the organization, the, what the organization provides you, the, the, the more like a voting power you have. And, 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 and of course this is, this is nice, like Im imagine that, like imagine for example that uh, uh, the users would be uh, the decisive power for the, like the future of the most used um, uh, social, um, the social media for example, and not the, the, the shareholders, that probably the things could like, take a little bit different dynamic then. Uh, this is, uh, the concept is of course that this is built on, on Ethereum with use of the, of the Ethereum tokens. So, so that payment uh, is made in a, in a, in a stable coin. At the moment in the, in the demo you will see in, a, in an hour or two, uh, this is DAI. Uh, and so most, most of the DAI goes to the service providers. Some of the DAIs are converted into, into GNT, so this is like a Golem uh, network nat native token. This GNT is like a, removed from the system to just give the economic cost of creating a POU token. This economic cost is, is, is needed to make that system like more, more robust, in fact. Um, and there is like a, like a fee, that the most important part of the fee, in fact, which is used to, uh, for, the, for the future development of the organization or, or its services. And here is where the, where the governance of the centralized organization usually fails, uh, because people do not want to vote like whether they want to feature this or that, and they are not competent to do that. So, so we're working out here is that, that users decide on the, on, the, on the money flow. So if, whether they want uh, like a party A, like a builder one or builder two or builder X to get the stream of funds that, that is related to the, to the share in the, in, the, in the proof of usage. Yeah. And this is in fact like what people are probably um, competent enough to do. Like this is basically like what you do in, in, in a democracy in elections. You, you, like, you, you like that guy and you vote for him and you don't like that guy and you don't vote for, uh, on him. We're really trying to, to free the user's mind from, from worrying or, or taking care about the infrastructure. We, we, we are adding those two layers that tries to shuffle those data containers, find uh, uh, on whatever infrastructure has been arranged for the user, and this this this, this economics or marketplace layer helps this, helps to find the proper infrastructure. And again, the container is the most fundamental uh, concept here. It's self-defined with with, a, with an address written on its own by its own. So again, this is in contrast to how file systems work today, because in a file system, there's always the parent, the directory that dictates the address of, of the files that are in there. You put a file that is named hello.txt in whatever path, and then the path to this file is whatever the path says plus the name of the file. Here, it's different. The full path is written here. And of course, this provides some challenges like resolving conflicts, etc. and we, we, uh, we're not gonna discuss all of them today, but we have uh, uh, addressed these uh, we spent some time addressing this, and, um, and that's sort of a technicality. And, and, and a number of containers, all the users' containers, uh, create what we call a forest, which is a namespace where you can find the containers through different paths, uh, um, because every container can have several names. And this having several names, by the way, let me stress this, because um, that's also 
fundamentally different from how RFI systems work. And again, we're going to see some demos later, but, but just think about it. All the five systems, uh, of course, as, as, as Julian just said, most of the people today do not use five systems as often as in the past because we have services. People lose the notion of file. But anyway, those of us who still want to own our data or want to own our, own our files, they access those data through file systems, whether it's through Finder application or whatever, Midnight Commander, Console, Internet Explorer, whatever. We access them through file systems and those file systems are very inconvenient because they, they enforce us to always put the file into one and only one path. Work, reports, wildland, uh, rather than topics, computers, information, wildland, or maybe time 2020, 09, 25, whatever. And this is very limiting. And because it's very limiting, there are a number of of note-taking apps and services that try to find different ways. So now the user ends up having some notes in this app, some other notes in another app, some other files in another app that tries to make it easier. And what we are doing here is we are liberating, we, we are removing this restriction. No longer my data containers, no longer photos from my, from my, from my uh, weekend trip to, to whatever needs to be only under one path. I can, I, can, I can name it by place, by time, by topic, by people who I share this trip with, and I can find them all through different paths. And we're gonna show you some, uh, talk, talk about it more later, but just, just want to stress it that this is possible because it's the container that defines all this. It's, we, we do not expect the parent, the parent directory to dictate the names. And this is pretty unusual um, and it's a core, core concept. So he, here we just show you uh, uh, the, the, the forest, like the namespace layer and some underlying containers. And this is the address in Wyland. We specify the user ID and the path, one of the paths. It could be one path or another path, as I just said. And let me stress that the user, of course, is just a public key or a key pair, actually. Uh, so it's a cryptographic identity. And it's, it's, it doesn't need to be connected with, with a blockchain ID, by the way, because uh, it could also be used without a blockchain if the user wants to configure the backends all by, all by themselves manually. That's also possible. But the point is that, that one, one person, one, one human, can have many devices, as we all have today, and every device if we want, if you want, can have can, can be a different user and can have a different forest. For example, my 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 um, personal iPad perhaps could have a different forest where there will be all, all sorts of photos and medias, and my work computer could be a different user and have different kind of forests organized uh, for access to to different work projects. 